Good morning. Welcome to Emmanuel Assembly of God. Whether you are here in the sanctuary or you are joining us online, we welcome you today. Happy Resurrection Day. Our very most sacred, blessed day of the year. Amen. Praise the Lord. If this had not happened, we wouldn't be here. Amen. Well, let's stand this morning as we celebrate Easter, and Pam is going to come with the reading of God's Word. Praise the name of the Lord. It's good to be in His house today. Hallelujah. The Lord your God is in the midst of you, a mighty Savior, who will rejoice over you with gladness and renew you in His love. He will joy over you with singing. Love righteousness, you who judge the earth. Think of the Lord in goodness and seek him in the integrity of heart. Though my flesh and my heart fail, God is the rock of my heart, my portion forever. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. When you call me to come and pray, I will listen to you. These things I have spoken unto you, that you might have peace. In the world you will have trouble, but take courage. I have overcome the world. And he shall stand and feed in the strength of the Lord. In his majesty they shall be great and abide. He shall be great unto the ends of the earth. And Jesus said to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Do you believe it? Jesus declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead, by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he lives unto God. Likewise reckon you also yourselves to be dead, indeed unto sin to be alive unto God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. That I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings, be made conformable unto his death. By any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if I apprehend, for which I also am apprehended of Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a lively, a living hope, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. The tomb is empty. Jesus Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Bless you on this beautiful resurrection Sunday morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. While you are at your seats, uh, in the sanctuary, uh, you can take your masks off. And just if you go uh, out to the restroom or when you're leaving, then you can put them back on. So what a joy it is that you'll be able to sing loudly without your mask on today, okay? All right, praise the Lord. Father, we welcome you into this house today. We pray, Lord, receive honor and glory. We are thankful for the resurrection. Bless your people today, we pray. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship the Lord together.
celebrating these last few days. How the Savior died for us. But he lives today. Moon and stars, they were
Rejoice this morning as we serve a risen Savior. He is alive. And Lord, we come to you, the, the Holy One of God, the Holy One that paid the price for our sin, the one who bore stripes upon his back for our healing. And we worship you and we glorify and we magnify you this morning. Father, we, we yield ourselves to you this morning. 
Father, I pray, O oh God, that you would minister in our midst. I know, Lord, there are some here this morning that need a touch in body, and we reach out to the risen Lord who is able this morning to, to touch and heal. We pray for those, O oh God, who are at home, can't be here this morning. I pray, Lord, that your spirit would surround them, O oh God. May the risen Savior walk into the room. God, raise them up today, we pray. I ask, Lord, for those that are facing difficult situations. Lord, not all that we face is a scar, is a wound in that way, but Lord, sometimes our soul, our spirit, Lord, is wounded, and we pray, Lord God, you would sustain and hold your people close to you today. Lord, we bring every burden and lay it at the foot of the cross today and bring it into bondage to you. And ask, so oh God, Lord, that you would hear our humble prayers. Minister to your people this morning, we pray. We ask in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you this morning as you prepare to give to the Lord. Thank you for your faithfulness to the house of the Lord. Thank you for your faithfulness to the finances of the church. And we appreciate that you have been so faithful. And God appreciates that too. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for these gifts that you have blessed our lives with. And may we in turn bless you as we give back to you a portion of what you have blessed us with. Bless your people together as they give. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you this morning as you give. Praise the Lord. Uh, Pam mentioned something today when she was uh, with the scriptures. And she said this, she says, Christ is risen. He's risen indeed, right? Would you join us in this song? Yeah. 
church this morning. Again, if you are feeling comfortable with it, you may take your mask off when you're in your seat and just wear it as you uh, leave the building or go to the restroom, okay? Amen. We will release the children to Children's Church in just a moment when your teachers get ahead of you so you're not out there with no teacher. And we'll let you go now. And the rest of you get to be bored with me for the next hour. Okay? Next week, I'm going to go to Children's Church and you're all going to be the same. Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. close our service in two ways this morning, and uh, Vinny, if you could stop at the back for just a second. Uh, we are going to be celebrating communion, and if you did not pick up a communion uh, packet when you came in, would you raise your hand, and Vinny will bring you one to your seat now. So we need one, two, oh, uh, Keep your hand up. One. Okay. Need one down here, Vinny. If you can bring communion back here. Okay. Okay. Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. Let's see. If we had time this morning, we would read the whole Easter story. And we would put it together in all of the end of the books of the Gospels. Mark. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We would take them all together and we would take every single fact. And uh, Now, this morning what we're going to read is in Mark 16, and we'll read the first eight verses of Mark 16. Um, you do understand and remember that the Gospels were written by different people who knew Christ or heard about Christ in different ways. All right. So, Matthew was a disciple. We also know him as Levi. Mark was a young man, and uh, he was not a disciple, but he worked with the disciple Peter. And he journeyed and walked with Peter, and uh, he wrote down a lot of what Peter uh, had said when his preaching and teaching. And then in Luke, Luke did not know Jesus, but Luke knew many, many, many people that did know Jesus. And so he interviewed them, and then he was able, from that perspective, to give not a first-hand account, but a first-hand account of those who saw Jesus. And then John was the disciple that was, uh, let's see, he and Jesus were like this, all right? They were besties, okay? Uh, they were also cousins, and uh, he and Jesus were close. And in their day, it wasn't polite to use your name in the book that you were writing about, we look at kind of awkward with that, you know, it says in the Gospel of John, John doesn't usually say that he is the one that's writing the book uh, or what he's writing about himself. Uh, instead, he will use, he'll say, the disciple whom Jesus loved. Or he will use the term, the beloved one. Now, me personally, I think it would be less boastful to say John, but to say the one Jesus loved or the most beloved. I, that, you know, I did a funeral one time and uh, this lady that died, she had a, she had a slew of children and, uh, and then a slew of grandchildren and great grandchildren and even some great greats. And uh, at, the, at the funeral and before the funeral and during the funeral and afterwards, uh, at least six of her granddaughters had to tell me, and these granddaughters aged anywhere from like 20 up to 35-ish, you know, maybe. I'm, I'm terrible with women's ages, so, you know, you all look like you're 29 to me, okay? And uh, they said to me, uh, qu privately, quietly, they said, I was her favorite. 
I said, oh, oh, you were? She says, yes, she told me many times I was her favorite. I said, oh, that's nice. And then when the next one came up and told me, she said, don't tell anybody, but I was her favorite. Graham told me that I was her favorite, but don't tell anybody. At least six of the granddaughters came up and told me I was her favorite. <laughs> now, it kind of makes an individual feel, uh, you know, really good, I suppose, but if it ever got around that they all were told the favorite, then there might be, the sparks might fly. Um, Jesus said he was going to rise from the dead. That's what happens here in the first eight verses of Mark 16. Are you ready? When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Now, you do know that Jesus, they thought Jesus was dead, right? They came bringing spices to anoint Jesus. It's his dead body. That's what they were coming to do. They weren't coming to his live body, his dead body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb and they asked each other, who will roll away the stone from the entrance of the tomb? Parentheses here. Probably they should have thought about that before they got almost to the tomb, right? Uh, but uh, none of us have ever got almost to some place and go, oh, did you remember the key? Do you remember the password? Okay. But when they looked up, when they got there, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You were looking for Jesus of the Nazarene, who was crucified. He is risen. He's not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going on ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were now, this is one account of some people that went to the tomb. It is not the whole story. Anybody here old enough to remember Paul Harvey and the rest of the story? Okay, there's always the rest of the story. Okay, and so you go to the other Gospels, and then even to in the, the rest of the New Testament, we're going to pick up little tidbits here and there. And so we kind of lay them over, and we get a great picture. Now, Jesus said that he was going to rise again. In John chapter 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, he said, I'm going to rise again. What? I'm gonna, you're going to die? <laughs> you know? Um, but he said that many times. He said, I'm going to die. In fact, in John 18, he said he set his face towards Jerusalem, and he told them plainly, I'm going up to Jerusalem. The chief priests and scribes and Pharisees, they're going to put me to death. They're going to abuse me, and I'm going to die. But he didn't stop there, he told them, not only am I going to die, but I'm going to rise again. Now, they were shocked. In fact, Peter said to Jesus, no way. No, don't talk like that. Now, we do that. Have you ever talked to someone that's old? Nobody's ever talked to anybody. One. We have one honest person. Okay, And in talking to that old person, they, well, I'm just going to die. You ever talk to anybody like that? I'm just going to die. I'm going to eat this cake. I'm going to die. You know? And, you know, I'm sick. I think I'm going to die. And, and what is your reaction? Yep, I think you're going to die. No, you don't tell them that. You don't say, yep, you're going to die. What do you do? You talk them into life. Jesus came to give us life and that life more abundantly, not death. Because you know what happens when a, when a person starts talking death? You know what happens when a person gives up? I read this little story in, you know, to my kids. I, read, I, was, I probably was read to me when I was a kid. The little train that could. The little train that could. He could, he could, he could, he could. And he kept going and going. And he finally made it. If you talk and let someone keep on talking about death, what's going to happen? They will get sick and they will die. Why? Because they give up. What is a person without hope? The Lord says, don't let anybody take this hope away from you. We need hope. 
Now, that's what we read in chapter 16. We read about hope. Now, the first thing I want us to see here this morning is, who believes our report? At first, in verse number 8, the women didn't say anything. Who's going to believe them, right? And isn't that what the prophet Isaiah said? Who has believed our report? Who's going to believe it? Now, the women did not go to see and to meet a risen Jesus. Remember when I said that? They went to anoint a dead body. And so they went expecting Jesus to be in the tomb. And they thought, who's going to roll the stone away? What's going to happen? Now, on their account, on their side, going for them, it was a loving act. Jesus died, you know, Thursday afternoon, uh, just about sundown, and they put him in the tomb early. And there wasn't a lot of time for them to prepare his body. And, you know, they put spices and wash him and all that stuff. And uh, they needed to get him buried because of the law quickly. And so they put him in a borrowed tomb. And so they were coming on Sunday morning to wash his body and to take care of that dead body to honor the dead. That's what they were doing, to give him what we would call today a proper burial. Now, notice it's the women that are coming. Who is it? Where are the disciples? Unfortunately, we guys leave a lot of work for women. We guys, you either say amen or ouch. One or the other. Now, the disciples had walked with Jesus. The disciples heard his teaching. The disciples saw his miracles. The disciples were there when the heavens were opened, and it said on two separate occasions, Behold, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. One of the disciples walked on water. The disciples were given power to go out and to heal people, raise the dead, pray for the sick. They were to dive out evil spirits. All of those guys saw and handled Jesus and the work of the Lord. And where were they on Sunday morning? We don't know where they were, but they weren't at the tomb. So the, Mary, the, the women are here. Now, later on, they get away from the fear, and they go and they tell the disciples. And Peter and John, they ran to the tomb. And what were they expecting to see when they got there? Of course, the women didn't know what they were talking about. Right, guys? Mary came back and said, they've taken the body of Jesus away. The stone's rolled away. And, and, the, and, the, and, the, and Jesus is gone. And Mary, Peter and John said, yeah, right. You got the wrong place. And so they ran to the tomb. When they got there, you know, John outran Peter. He was, a, he was a good runner. And he got there and he looked in. Peter, when he got there, he went running right into the tomb. He saw the grave clothes empty. He saw the, the head wound, the head uh, bandaged by itself laying there. And he, they looked at it. And they went away amazed. Now still, Peter still hadn't believed yet. Uh, John says... He saw and believed. They marveled at the empty tomb. Now, go just a little sideways for just a moment. Where are we in our belief system? Don't put your hands up. Okay? Sometimes we are prone to wander. Sometimes our trust identify with that? We're walking in life, things are going on, something happens, and do we always jump right on, the Lord's going to take care of me, the Lord's going to take care of me, I'm going to make it, I'm going to live, I'm going to, do we, are we always there? No, sometimes we're in the mullet grubs, we get down, we get the blues, okay, are we always happy? Are we always content? Are we always rejoicing? Are we always trustful? Mm, sometimes not so much. Or do we have fears and suspicions and doubts? Do we pray the prayer every once in a while? Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. Do we pray, Lord, increase my faith? We do. That's human nature. So how do we change? unbelief 
into belief. The answer is the fact of the resurrection. Every doubt, if you go to the end of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, every doubt that is recorded there in connection with the tomb and the death of Jesus, every doubt, its answer is found in these three little words, he is risen. Every, every problem is answered by he is risen. Let's go sideways just a little bit. Okay? Every problem that you have today is found in those three little words. He is risen. Because the fact that he is risen answered every one of those situations. The fact of him being risen today will help you in everything that you're going through. The fact that he is risen will cause you and help you to be lifted up. It will change your life. The soldiers, what were the soldiers doing? They were guarding a dead man's tomb. The soldiers, do you know the only people who really saw the resurrection were the Roman soldiers guarding the tomb. The scripture says that early, early, early in the morning, the angel of the Lord came down, and there they were, those Roman soldiers. I, I kind of think that there were probably eight of them. There were, there were 16 guarding the tomb. Every six hours they changed. There were four of them at a time. I think it was just to change the guard. I think four were coming off, four were going on. Uh, and scripture says that when they saw the angel come down and touch and roll the zone away, all of a sudden they became as dead men. Have you ever been uh, shocked by something or afraid and you couldn't move? These men, they became as dead men, but they could still see and hear everything that was going on. Who were the real witnesses to the resurrection? They went to the chief priests and the scribes and the Pharisees and the high priests, and they told them, this is what we saw. The angel came down and rolled the stone away, and he's not there anymore. And they said, uh, uh, the, the, well, uh, it's like this. We're going to give you $10 billion, and you're going to say that the disciples came and stole his body away. And if the governor hears about it, we'll, we'll vouch for you. Don't, don't worry about it. And they, so they took the money. Okay? And they story. But the soldiers really saw Jesus raised from the dead. The women thought they were coming to anoint a dead body and to roll away the stone. What's the answer to the dead body? What's the answer to who's going to roll the stone away? He is risen. Peter and John, they're running to the empty tomb and they're amazed and they don't know what's going on. What's the answer to their amazement and their question and their puzzling? He is risen. Every single question there is, is answered by, he is risen. The two men on the road to Emmaus, they thought Jesus was the Messiah. And that was a perplexing situation to them. What was the answer to their puzzlement? He is risen. When they thought that, Je the guard, they thought that Jesus had been moved by someone and taken his body to a different place. And, and the women were weeping. Remember, Mary was weeping and weeping, and she thought, she saw the gardener, she said, where is his body? The answer to where his body had gone, the answer to that is, he is risen. Every single situation is answered by, he is risen. Where were the ten? Well, where were the eleven? Well, at ten, at one point, they were hiding what was the answer to their hiding, afraid that they would be next? What was the answer to that? He is risen, and he came to them. Thomas said, because Thomas wasn't there. We don't know why Thomas wasn't there. But Thomas said, I will never believe until I put my hands in his nail prints and my hand in his side. You remember that story? He said, I'll never believe it. Of course, you probably all know people that won't believe anything, right? Unless they see with their absolute eyes and stuff, they don't, won't believe it. What's the answer to Thomas's doubt? He is risen. And so when the eleven were all together in one place, what did Jesus do? He showed himself. He walked right into that situation. Who will roll the stone away for us? The women have a problem. They are not strong enough to roll the stone away. 
The resurrection addresses all of these problems. The resurrection removes the difficulty. Don't worry. Christ has this handled. What are you going through this week? Don't worry about it. Jesus has it handled. He is more than able to take care of the situation. The stone is rolled away because he is risen. The stone rolled away to show them he was gone. What fear do we have today? Fear of putting your trust in the Lord? Fear he won't take care of you? Sometimes we get afraid that, well, you know, we mess up and the Lord's not going to forgive us. Real fears? Right? Okay. We, we get like that. We, we're, we're afraid. We doubt it. See, the angel of the Lord took the stone away. He took care of it. Because it was time for Jesus to come out of the grave. There's a comedian. I don't know what it is. And I can't remember what it is. But it, the line goes, your time is up. And I don't know. And it just came to my mind. Your time is up. Okay? It's time for Jesus to come out of the grave. And I will tell you this morning, it is time for you this morning to experience that he is risen in your situation. It is time, time's up. It is time for you to experience that he is risen in your life. The resurrection moves stones. It quells fears. It clears the path of life. I want to trust that the Lord will move my stone. And I want to encourage you this morning that Jesus Christ will move your stone when the time is needed. See, when it was Friday night, when it was Saturday night, when it was Saturday, the stone didn't need to be moved, did it? Sunday morning, let's say they came at 6 o'clock in the morning. Well, at 5.50, the stone didn't need to be moved away. Right, 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 right. Why? Because they're not here, there yet. The stone only needs to be moved at 6 when they got there, or before they got there. God's never late. He knows when your stone needs to be moved. He knows when it needs to be rolled away. Trust in the Lord. Is someone giving you a hard time? Maybe somebody at work. Maybe somebody at play. Maybe somebody in your life. Maybe a, maybe a parent's giving you a hard time. Or a child is giving you a hard time. Or a relative. It does happen in families, right? Okay, my is the only family that I don't have any. I'm preaching to my family this morning. Okay. Jesus said, all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Power over life, sickness, confusion, troubles. Jesus, Jesus is not dead behind the stone. He is risen. His body is not decaying in the grave someplace. He's in risen. He is leading the way to victory. And he said, I have the keys of hell, death. The next time we see Jesus with our physical eye will be when he comes back riding on a white horse leading the armies of the Lord. The next time that unbelief raises his head in your situation, I want you to say, he is risen. When you feel doubts, afraid, discouraged, he is risen. Now in verses 5 and 8, in what I read this morning, twice it says that the women were frightened. And uh, you know there are some people that get frightened at the drop of a hat, right? They, it doesn't take, you can go, boom. And they will go, <laughs> and they go, okay. Uh, Beth and I watched uh, Jesus by Sight and Sound out of Branson, Missouri, the uh, night before last. And it is absolutely incredible, okay? Uh, and when Mary Magdalene sees Jesus, the actress, you know, G 
Jesus is there. He's, she's, he's the gardener, she thinks. And so she said, please, sir, tell me where the body is, and I'll come and get it. And when he says, Mary, uh, in, the, in the scripture, it says that she says to him, Rabboni, or that is teacher. Now, we read that. Right? You've read that a couple times? You, you know that verse that I'm talking about? And so this actress, when she turned around and when she recognized Jesus, her reaction was like, oh! <laughs> I mean, that was the best reaction I've ever seen of, of Mary Magdalene that uh, was watching and seeing Jesus. Because I want to tell you folks, if I'm expecting that someone is dead, You guys are so smart, and you're way ahead of me this morning. I mean, I mean that sometimes might be gruesome, but let's just put it, make it real, okay? I love my grandfather to pieces, okay? I just love him. And, uh, you know, I was really sad when he passed away. Now, this morning, if I turned around and my grandfather was standing right here, I wouldn't just go, oh, hi, Gramps. I would be that same, oh, right? Okay. Let's make it real. Sometimes people think the Bible is so boring. Not the Bible that I have. See, Jesus speaks peace to every situation. Self-control. Calm. Do you know a quiet mind has saved so many lives? You don't know how many times when I'm talking to someone that's going through a test or a trial, one of the first things that I will tell them is, and you know I've said it to you before, okay, take a deep breath. Are you ready? Take a deep breath. people are all like this here, it's, it's not much good, okay? Uh, it's not going to help much. The scripture says, be still and know that I am God. He says, because I live, you will live also. He says, Behold, you are in my hand, and no one can pluck you out. He says to you and to me, fear not, I am with you. Fear not, the world's going to test you and try to tear you apart, but I have overcome the world. Through the Old Testament prophet, he said, I will strengthen you. Yea, I will help thee. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. When you pass through the rivers, I will be with thee. The floods shall not overflow thee. When thou goest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle against you. That is the answer to every situation. He is risen, and he will be with you. Now, the women were amazed. We read that a couple times, and James and John were amazed. What is amazement? Amazement is, can't figure it out. You're troubled by it. You're perplexed by it. And here they were worried about the stone being a problem, but now it's moved away. Now they have a different problem. They've come with ointment, but nothing to, to anoint. What are they going to do? And they were amazed. What's the explanation to this? The explanation was not that his body was moved. Oh, wait a minute. The explanation was that his body was moved. His body was moved all right, but it was not moved to a different tomb. It was now moved that he is alive. And that's the answer today. The body has been moved, not by man. But the Spirit of the Lord came back into Jesus, and he was raised from the dead. That is the answer. 
He was he is risen. Every situation, every problem today is he lives, he lives, he lives, he's alive, he's alive. That is the answer. In one of the instances, he tells the women, go and tell my disciples, I'm going ahead of you into Jerusalem. Go and tell my disciples. Now, for a while, they didn't do that. Silence, fear. But you know what? The truth will set you free. It will. They saw an empty tomb. They were weeping. They thought someone had moved the body. He's risen. Do you, do you see the conundrum? The body's gone. The body's risen. And what are they doing? They're weeping. Church, he's risen. And sometimes I sit here weeping. Right? Remember what I said about Lord, I believe that help my unbelief. I have problems. There's stones in the way. We think there's dead bodies on the other side of that stone. Situations that we can't change. Church, instead of weeping, we should be proclaiming and shouting, He is risen. He's alive. He's alive. They were weeping. And heaven was rejoicing. There was an angel that wasn't busy that morning, and he said to the Lord God Almighty, said to the angel, said, go move that stone. Send him down. You know, so that angel, he you know, rolled up his sleeve <laughs> and just moved that thing. And out of the grave came Jesus. Have problems this morning? Don't we? Rejoice, for he is risen. Doesn't matter what you're going through, he is risen. Now let's pray. Father, this morning, we thank you that you are risen. And Lord, that is the answer for every situation that we are going through today. And I pray, Lord God, speak peace to my inner person. Speak peace in my inner soul. Speak peace in my spirit. Lord, there are times that something happens. I, I get disturbed. I get discouraged. I get, I, Lord, it just causes me to wonder. And Lord, help my unbelief. Father, we look to you with eyes of faith. We behold the risen Lord. Let the dark clouds be replaced this morning by proclamations he is alive. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have your packet for communion this morning, just a few days before the resurrection, Jesus celebrated Passover with his disciples. He said, I have longed to celebrate this Passover with you. And the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread. If you want to take the bread out of your packet. He gave the disciples, he said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this bread and for this cup. We thank you for what they mean to us today. We thank you that you purchased our great salvation on the cross. Amen. He said, take heed, this is my body, which is broken for you. Let us partake together. And then he took the cup and he gave it to them. He said, this is the covenant. This is the new covenant. This is the, the new testament. This is the seal that you know that this has happened for you. Every covenant is sealed with blood. Our salvation has been purchased by the blood of Christ. 
And he told them, this do in remembrance of me. Let us partake together. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, for your hearts. Let's stand as we close with this song this morning.